most often when we are training neural networks to do classification, we use the negative log likelihood. But in practice, if you actually go and call the function in PyTorch or TensorFlow, that loss function will be called the cross entropy loss. And so in this video, I just quickly want to show you that training with negative log likelihood is actually the same as um, what they call cross entropy loss in um, PyTorch or TensorFlow. So as our example, um, I'm just going to draw the little vector diagram for a small neural network. So let's say we've got the input x and x feeds into a number of layers, hidden layers. And what we then have is we've got our um, little penultimate layer here, which I will just call z. Okay, so after passing this through these hidden layers, we end up with a little vector z here. And uh, let me just say that z has like three dimensions, and the values here can be between minus infinity and infinity. And then what I do is I push z through a function, which we call the softmax. And then this is really the final output of my model, f of uh, theta, where theta is just all the parameters for input x. And these numbers, if I add them up, they sum to 1. They're all between 0 and 1. If you don't know the softmax, um, please go and watch the video on multi-class classification that I have from before. So um, and let's just write out the mathematics here as well. So what you end up having is that the output of your model is a little vector. Theta I just used to denote all the parameters of my model, and the input is x. And um, it's passed through this whole thing, dunk, 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 dunk. But in the end, the output depends on that z. So you take the softmax of z, which is a vector. OK. And what is the softmax? The softmax, you basically take the exponential of each of the elements of z. So e, z1, e, z2, dot, 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 e, z, capital K. You stack all of that into a vector, and then each of these elements are normalized by the sum um, of, of all the exponentials, e, z, j. Okay, and this means, uh, taking the exponentials means that these values are all positive, and then normalizing means that they all sum to 1. Okay, so that's the softmax and the softmax definition. Okay, excellent. Cool. Now, we're going to train this model with negative log likelihood. Okay, so we're going to train this model with a negative log likelihood, which means that our last function j depends on our parameters theta. And negative log likelihood is really nice because it's all in the name. It's the negative of the log of the likelihood of my training data. And if my data is iid, then the likelihood is just the product of the probability of observing a specific label given my input x, okay? And this probability, this is the thing that's parameterized by my model, so this prob probability depends on my parameters theta, okay? And the cool thing about the log of a product is it turns that into the sum of the logs, okay? And that's why the log likelihood is so nice. Okay, now according to my model, what is this? What is this thing? Well, it this thing says, what is the probability, uh, given my input x, of x belonging to, to the class to which it really belongs? So this is a training item. I know that this thing belo belongs to class number 2, for instance. Then let's say yn is, is 2. Then what, according to my model, is the probability of xn belonging to um, class 2? Well, it's the value here of the second item in my output. If yn belonged to class number 1, then I would take the first element. If yn belonged to class capital K, I would take the last element. But this probability, that's given by basically, um, the, basically the output of the model at that index. Okay. Now, we can write that. There's more than one way to write it. But let's say that we represent the, the ground truth label of, of the input x as a vector. Okay, and specifically it's a one out vector which has zeros everywhere, okay, except for the one position um, that corresponds to this class and then zeros everywhere as well. So if this thing belongs to class um, like little k, 
then there would be a element one at um, ach, there would be a value one at element k. This dimensionality of this whole thing that's big capital K. Okay, so this is just a one out representation. And if you do that, then we can write out this thing um, according to um, the output of the model. We can write that out like this. So what we do is we say the sum over our training items plus the sum over all possible classes. So from little k up to big K. Okay, from little k equal to one up to big K. And what we do is we say, okay, well, take this vector and look at the little kth element. Okay, and you write that there. So y, this is now that one out vector, little element k of the nth thing. Okay, so this value, if um, my training item n is assigned to class 3, then this will be equal to 1 if we uh, are at um, class 3, and it will be 0 for all the other classes. Then we have the log, and then the output of our model at that specific element, which in this case is just e to the power zk divided by the sum j equals to 1, k, e, z, j. Okay, so looks tricky, but all that, that, all that this does is if you represent the output as a one out vector, then what this says is basically strip out the element in my output that corresponds to the class to which this thing belongs. I can write this out a little bit more. And then we've got the log. And what this really is, is it's the little kth output here of our model, right? So if I represent the prediction of my model as a, as a vector, y hat, then this is just y hat for my nth training item, the little kth element in this, in this output vector. Okay, cool. Nothing new here, nothing too exciting. We've just written out the negative log likelihood in terms of basically this output prediction vector and then this one out representation for the ground truth label. Okay, fine. Life is wonderful. Now, if you go and look up the definition of cross entropy, which we haven't spoken about at all, but if you go and look up the definition of cross entropy on Wikipedia, then you see that you have this following definition. So what it says on Wikipedia is if I have two discrete distributions with a probability mass function um, for the one given by P, which is this little vector, and for the other distribution, um, I've got a probability mass function with weights Q, then the cross entropy between these two uh, is given by this equation here. Okay, so we take um, the mass from the one, the log times the mass of the other one, and we're summing up over the elements in the two, um, two distribution, the possible um, outcomes. Okay, and then we take the negative. Okay, that, this is the definition of cross entropy. Now, if you stare at the negative log likelihood that we wrote here, and specifically this like inner part here with the negative there, what do you see? You can think of P in this case as the one hot representation here, our ground truth label. Okay. And you can think of Q in this case, the QK, as the prediction from our model. And if you think about the output from our model as my one distribution and the ground truth one out representation as my other distribution, then you can see that actually the inside of this thing is exactly the definition of the cross entropy. Negative log likelihood, cross entropy, loss function, and pi towards the tensor flow, it's the same thing.